Okay, this is a sound check. Can you guys hear me? All right. Not too quiet, not too loud. <clears throat> We're just waiting for people to join in. People are rolling in here. 61 people. Oh, we have still 61. Okay. Yeah, I would say this is much better than Bongo. Especially for the sound and video as well. So I'm going to ask you to just not use your cameras. This way, when we don't use the cameras, uh, I noticed uh, that the video quality is going to be better. Uh, it's going to be better during the recording when you when you watch the recording on YouTube. <laughs> All right, we have 68 people let's just give it a minute or so for people to join in and then <clears throat> i'm gonna start the lesson very soon And in the meantime, uh, while we wait, you might want to mouse over my beautiful face and you're going to see a thing that says mute, so don't mute me. <laughs> or you might not even see that, I'll see that. Uh, but right beside that, you're going to see something like three dots. And when you click on the three dots, then you choose the option that says pin video. Then you're going to see me on the big screen. And that's the idea here. Okay, I'm just going to queue up my uh, lesson here. I, I got to find a way. I got to find a way on, uh, on how to how to automatically admit people. Because this way I have to, uh, right now I have to admit everybody who wants to join the meeting or the class. Okay, looks like it has settled down. All right, so this is um, the second week right now. And the course is, oh, people are still coming in. Admit. So the course is, uh, Safety, then 51, week two. Week two. And today we're going to look at cable types. Cable types. That's the topic for today. All right. So it is four minutes after two. Everybody should be in. People still joining in. So I'm just going to keep looking once in a while into that uh, little area on my screen. So this is where my monitor is right here. So. All right. I can see that the scores are rolling in for the online quiz that has to do with lab one uh, meter types. And based on that, but after the quiz is, or after the, yeah, the quiz is closed, uh, which is going to be next Tuesday at midnight. So you still have, uh, 
you still have time to uh, to complete that. You have two attempts. There's no time limit once you log in. Um, just uh, I want you to learn while you're doing this. Okay, that's the idea. Okay? And that's how I pretty much design all my quizzes uh, that I post online. The quiz, uh, there's a question, is the quiz an open book? Yes, the quiz is an open book. Uh, it's an online quiz. There is no way I could look over your shoulder. So, uh, but uh, by saying that, I also, I have designed this quiz in such way that uh, you are actually learning while you're doing it, which is basically the whole point of this whole, um, of this whole party that uh, we have here. All right, <clears throat> cable types. Let's just uh, start. Uh, uh, we have one hour to go, or 55 minutes left. Uh, let's uh, let's start. So I'm going to switch to my laptop. All right. I hope everybody can see that. If not, just mouse over this um, and um, no, we don't need to get the password. Oh, yeah, Jacob is waiting. Admit, welcome Jacob, okay. All right, uh, just, make my, uh, just make my screen, uh, just make me a big screen, and then uh, there's nothing else you have to do. Just, just, just mouse over, and when you see the three dots in the top right corner, uh, just click on that and choose the option that says pin video, and you're going to, um, uh, you're going to see me on the big screen and uh, anything that I present is going to be uh, visible for you. Also, this lesson is being recorded, so just uh, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, whether you are saying you're going to say something uh, or if you're just going to type something in the chat lines, just remember this is being recorded, okay? All right, Cody is waiting. Admit, okay. Now, wh whoever is late, they might have to wait a couple minutes or a few seconds uh, because I have to see that you're waiting to be admitted. Okay. All right, let's, let's just start this uh, exercise here. Uh, cable types. Um, household wiring and cables. Today is the, that's the topic of today. All right, so now uh, in the... Uh, in the top left corner, we have an image of different type of wire, different types of wires. There's no way I'm going to be able to present all wires that exist because I don't think there was going to be a lifetime for me to uh, to be able to do that. Um, admit, okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you, I, I'm just starting you up on this, and you're going to get into a more de into more details uh, as far as the cable type knowledge as you go along in uh, this and other subjects as well. Okay, so let's just quickly analyze what we see here. Uh, on the top here, we have two wire cable, and this one shows three wire cable. I'm not sure if you can see how much details you can see. However. Uh, you are going to be able to download this presentation uh, and, uh, and and you'll be able to see more details in PDF files. Uh, so let's just keep going here. Uh, all right. So on the top, the very top wire, you see something, two-wire cable. But immediately, what do we see? We see one, two, three wires. So why is it that we look... Uh, the cable and it says two wire but there are three wires actually okay we're going to take a look at that uh, then uh, the next one we see three wire cable and over here if we count the wires inside that cable we're going to see one two three and four huh. then the next one we're going to see two wire armored cable um, also, those are called MC, as Master of Ceremonies, all right? But that doesn't stand for, that's, that's, that stands for metal clad. MC stands for metal, so sometimes the armored cable is going to be called MC cable, and the MC stands for metal clad. Metal. Metal clad. Cable. Also, it is known as armor. 
cable. Clad, cladding, the meaning of the word cladding is basically encasing. Yeah. You have a wire or you have, a, have two fingers. I'm going to clad my two fingers with my hand. Okay. So that's basically, it's, it's encased in a metal armor. So you just learned something right now. Then there is another uh, 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 cable that looks like the almost looks like the same as the same as the first one on top, and this one shows uh, uh, UF underground feeder cable. And when you download the PDF, when you download the PDF version of this uh, of these lecture notes, uh, you can click on this here if you want to find out more. Of, uh, uh, so you can just see how deep this rabbit hole goes as far as uh, cabling types and knowledge of, of that. All right, so let's just go back. Uh, uh, let's just go back on the top first. Um, <clears throat> you see two wire cable, but you can see three wires in there. Yeah, but it's called a two wire. There's another thing that says you're going to be able to see once you don't download this document. Um, you're going to see that uh, uh, that it says 14.2. That means that it has two current carrying conductors and one ground wire, or you can just call that wire a bonding wire. And we're going to stop uh, at some point. We're going to discuss. Oh, actually, why don't we stop right here? And we're going to. Uh, find out what the difference is between grounding and bonding, okay? All right, grounding and bonding, what is the difference? Wet cloth and a dry cloth. Just to have a clear view here. All right, let's say there is a terminal, a screw terminal on some device. There's a screw terminal. And there is a wire going. There's a wire that is mounted on the screw terminal. It goes in around the screw and it's just pinched by the screw. That's called screw terminal. And let's say this wire goes somewhere and it is wrapped around a spike that is going, that is driven into the ground. Okay. I'm going to lower the light so you can see things better. Oh, yeah. Turn this on, that helps. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's see this. Uh, okay, so here's a wire that is, that is mounted on the screw terminal. This is a wire and it's wrapped around a spike that is driven into the ground. This is a ground, all right? There's some flowers growing and grass growing here, okay? Uh, this screw terminal is considered to be grounded, okay? Now let's say this terminal is also internally connected to another screw terminal. And over here, there's another wire that is mounted in the screw terminal. And that goes into another device. And it's mounted on whatever terminal that is here. So this terminal right here is considered to be grounded because there is a direct connection, uninterrupted connection to the ground. Now this terminal is electrically connected to that terminal. These two terminals are connected, but there's a wire coming out of here and it's connected to another bonding terminal of something else. 
this terminal is considered to be bonded. There is no difference in the electrical connection because that thing is also connected to the ground, but it's not correct connected directly to the ground. It goes through something. It goes to another device and it's still connected to the ground, but technically it is going to be called bonded. Okay, so here's the difference and uh, you will need to know that for sure. Difference between grounding and bonding. So now you just have learned something else. Okay. Now, just gonna bump up the light here. Okay. Now, go back to the, yeah, if somebody doesn't see me on the big screen, just uh, mouse over. You're going to see me in a small screen somewhere on your, on, your, on your computer screen. Just put your mouse over that. Uh, three dots are going to appear in a blue background. Click on those three dots and then choose the option that says pin video. And then you're going to see me on the big screen. Right. So let's just keep going. Now in electrical wires, we distinguish two types of wires. Some of the wires are going to be considered as current carrying conductors. And the other ones are going to be considered bonding or grounding wires. So when we mention something, when we call the wire 14-2, that means the wire, the cable, the cable carries two current carrying conductors and one, excuse me, grounding conductor. So the grounding conductor is not accounted for when, uh, uh, when you consider the naming scheme of the wire. So 14-2 cable is going to have, let's say 14-2. There is a jacketing. And there are wires coming. So there's going to be, let's say, white wire, black wire, and bare copper. All right. So this is going to be white, black, and then there's going to be bare copper. Bare copper, which is basically uh, not jacketed wire. These two wires are considered to be current carrying conductors. With white being neutral, neutral and black is going to be hot. So this is 14, two cable, okay? which means these wires, the current carrying conductors are going to be 14 gauge. And we're going to talk about what gauge is, okay? So two cables, two carrying conductors, and one grounding wire or bonding wire, okay? Now this number here tells you the gauge. What is the gauge? Gauge is a thickness. Oh, some people waiting here. Admit. All right. People who are late, you will be able to see the first few minutes of this lesson while I post it on YouTube sometime later today. That's the price for being late. <laughs> All right. So now this 14, number 14, tells us that these are 14 gauge. What's a gauge? Gauge describes the Basically, in the most basic terms, the gauge describes the thickness of the cable. Okay. Going to end that here. I don't need to hear anything. Um, all right. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> it's blurry for uh, is it blurry for any, anyone else? Do you have the video blurry, guys? 
Is this video blurry? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. A little. Fine. For <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to. Uh, uh, well, it's probably the bandwidth. Turn off your cameras. If you turn off your cameras, we're going to save the bandwidth. Okay. Oh my God. No, it's not like that. All right. And we're going to talk about the gauge in the next few slides. All right. Um, now, there's a wire that says 10 gauge, and there's a wire that says 12 gauge. The gauge. We're going to come back to the gauge. All right. Common household cables and wire types. Okay, so on the top here, we have something that's called single conductor wires. And in some labs, you are going to use single conductor to wire things. And in some, uh, in some labs, you're going to use the cables. K a cable is, uh, is an end jacket. It's a, it's, a, it's a collection of conductors closed in a jacket thing. So it's a cable. A wire, a single conductor, uh, would be sometimes you use single conductor and over here you see solid core wire and stranded wire by the way this one you can see it's green um, and yeah uh, once you download you're going to see the, 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 the uh, more details in those and I want you to download the PDF file uh, as your posted lecture notes okay so uh, now you can see green jacketing here. So this is going to tell me that this is a grounding or bonding wire. The rule about jacketing is whenever you have a grounding wire or, or bonding wire, and you should make notes of these, uh, or unless, you want, to have, uh, unless you, you want to go back and watch all these videos here, but they're going to accumulate, but it's going to be there for you to watch. So as far as jacketing, when you see green jacketing or bare copper, yeah. That means it's a grounding wire. <clears throat> All right. If you see any other color, that means it should be a current carrying conductor. Which means current carrying conductor means that this wire is supposed to be working as a current carrying wire, it's supposed to carry current. If some, uh, it, it's it's a working wire. The grounding wire is more like a safety type of a feature. If something goes wrong, then the bare copper wire or the green jacketed wire that's considered the bonding on grounding is supposed to take the hit instead of you. Okay. So that's in, a, in the most basic terms. Okay. Um, go back to our slides. And now we see the solid versus stranded. And I have separate couple of slides. We're <clears throat> going to come back to that. And there's multiple no, multiple conductor cables here. This one, uh, well, right here. Okay, should use the proper mouse. Uh, so now, um, multi conductor cables. Type NM. NM stands for non-metallic sheeted cable. Sheeted is basically jacketed. Uh, cable twelve two. Now we have 12 gauge, which is the thickness of the gauge that is 12. Um, and, um, and then we have one that is not counted, which is the grounding or bonding wire. Okay. Uh, so we have a hot wire and we have a neutral wire. Neutral is always white. And the other color is going to be current carrying conductor unless it's green or bare copper. So if you have only two conductors, current carrying conductors, you're going to have white as a neutral, which is basically the return wire. And you're going to have a black, which is hot wire, which is going to be also called supply wire. So we have a supply wire, return wire. This is where the current is leaving the power supply or electrical panel or whatever supplies the power. That's where it's going to be hot. So the voltage is going to be there. Then there's going to be a neutral wire. Uh, this is a return. Technically, the neutral wire should be at the same potential as, as uh, the ground wire. However, they are not electrically connected. Okay. 
Non-metallic sheet, non-metallic is basically the jacket thing is uh, some sort of a PVC form, uh, not armor because this is a metallic MC, metal clad, metal surrounding. So this is a metallic jacket thing. This is a non-metallic, okay? The non-metallic shield cable 14.3. So this is 12.2, 14.3. So the 12.2 should tells us that the cable, the, uh, the cables, the wires are of the gauge of 12. And losing my mouse. And this 14 here says that the thickness of these wires are of the gauge 14. And then uh, this is um, uh, two, so two current carrying conductors plus a grounding wire. And this is 14.3, so thickness of 14, and three current carrying conductors um, uh, plus, so plus the um, uh, uh, grounding wire, okay? So let's analyze the 14.3 the, the here. Uh, we're going to have the grounding wire, so we're not counting that. So we should have three working wires. So one is going to be neutral, which is white. Then, of course, as just like at the previous one, we're going to have black wire, which is hot. And we're also going to have a red wire. Next one is going to be red, which is going to be a current carrying conductor. What's the difference between metallic and non-metallic? Um, the metallic and non-metallic, it applies to the jacketing. All right, so this is the non-metallic jacketing, plastic PVC jacketing, and over here is an armored, which is a metallic jacketing. Okay, so metallic versus non-metallic. Okay, it applies to the jacketing. Um, large appliances uh, for dedicated uh, circuits, strand wires. Uh, so yeah, so you can also see some larger cables as well, and you can see that the, the thicker gauges they go to, uh, they abandon the solid core wire, but they go into the stranded wire. And we're going to analyze that in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between a hot and a current carrying? Uh, okay. Um, a hot wire, a hot wire and a current carrying wire are, the, well, a hot wire is a current carrying conductor. Let's say uh, there is electrical panel, and the panel has the uh, hot terminal, hot terminal, and then there is a neutral terminal. Okay, so let's say we have a light bulb on the other side symbol for the light bulb and there's a wire going so this is going to be a black hot is going to be a black wire and it's going to be connected into a light bulb it is going to supply the current and the current is going to return on the white wire which is neutral white So the current is going to leave the hot terminal, go through a light bulb and come back on the neutral, uh, on the return wire. So they're both current carrying conductors. They're supposed to carry the current. Then the electrical panel is also going to have something that is a grounding or bonding terminal right here. So this is also, and that wire is also going to travel around the cable. So let's say this is a, this is a, a uh, housing for the light bulb. It's a metallic uh, housing. So there is also going to be a bonding wire going inside the cable here. And it's going to travel and to be connected. It's going to be connected to the box. So this is the grounding wire. Ground or bond. Depending on how it's connected. We went over that. So in this cable here, you're going to have three cables, two current carrying conductor, which are the working conductors, and one grounding wire. So the grounding wire is just grounding the box for safety. So if something happens, if let's say if, the, uh, uh, if, if this wire becomes loose and for some reason touches the box, 
you can touch that box and if this was not grounded and you could get electrocuted if you complete the circuit maybe your feet are standing on the floor that is you know, grounded so if you touch the box you're going to get electrocuted so that's why the grounding wire is important here because if that happens the uh, the electricity or the current is going to flow through the box right to the ground it's going to be grounded so if you touch it you're not going to um, uh, you're not going to get electrocuted okay so this is a current carrying conductor current carrying conductor and there's a safety conductor for the ground uh, we're going to go over the thicknesses and, and gauges in a few minutes okay all right so let's um let's just keep going here so uh okay so this mc or armored cable uh quite often uh, you're going to in the construction sites uh in the industry you're going to hear both terminology uh, uh, uh you're going to hear the armored cable or mc and uh, mc stands for metal clad and clad means just uh put something in uh, in, the, in surrounding something they're also in uh, communications later on. Next term, we'll be talking about the uh, uh, communications wiring, and some of them are copper cladded aluminum. So this will be aluminum wire. Uh, this will be aluminum wire cladded by copper, just to save on copper. But uh, but uh, that's that's basically as far as the terminology goes. Okay. All right, let's just keep going here. Here's the gauges. All right. Now, the higher the number higher the number of the gauge, the, a gauge stands for a, uh, AWG, that's for the gauge, and that stands for American Wiring Gauge. Okay. Just uh, clear the board here for a second. All right, AWG, AWG, American Wiring Gauge, AWG. So <clears throat> when somebody, uh, the, here's the terminology. If somebody just says, uh, if you see 12, AWG, okay? You're going to see something, uh, you're not going to read 12 AWG, you're just going to read 12 gauge, okay? That's all, that's, that, that's, that's all there is going to be to it. Uh, all right, now, the higher the number, if the gauge goes up, the number goes up, then the thickness, of the wire goes down. Okay. I hope I spelled this right. <laughs> All right, uh, so that's that's how it works. So once we go into the uh, our presentation here, you can see that there are different numbers. So here's 14 gauge, here's 12 gauge, here's 10 gauge. Eight. So you see the gauge number goes down as the gauge number goes down, the thickness of the wire goes up. Okay, now, <clears throat> let me just see here. I do have, um, I put a couple of cables um, under the microscope so you could see, you could see the differences here. So I'm going to go to my microscope view all right now you see you're going to see three cables so the one that is far most right which is uh this one right here can i reach it yeah that's the one this one right here that's the 14 gauge wire and you see those little lines i'm going to focus on those lines behind these are millimeters i just put like a little ruler uh in the background of my microscope okay so this here, this wire right here, that's a 14 gauge wire, thickness of the gauge of 14. 
The one beside it right here, it's a 12 gauge. You see it's a little bit thicker. They're both copper wires, okay? I'll wait for the phones to stop ringing. Okay, now, uh, and then uh, over here, so you see these guys here, these are solid wires, solid core wires. And this one right here is a stranded wire. Solid wire is just one uh, chunk of copper. And the stranded wire is combined from many thinner wires to compensate for the thickness of, of, of um, a certain gauge. Okay, now, there's one, uh, one thing that uh, I want you to understand is that, and I'm going to ask you that on the, uh, on the, on the test. Yes, I do have a microscope. <laughs> hey, I do it for you. I got this thing ready here. Okay, I had four months in the summer to get ready for it. All right, so now um, when you see, um, yeah. wipe the board, wipe the board. Okay. Let's say you have a wire that is supposed to be a certain gauge. It's just uh, the magnification of the gauge, now let's say this is 14, 14 gauge. Okay. It's a solid copper, solid. Now, this 14 gauge is supposed to have certain ampacity. Ampacity, and ampacity is the ability to carry current, measured ability to carry current. This has to, has, has to have certain ampacity. It's supposed to carry a certain amount of current. Now, if you want to have a stranded, <laughs> 14 gauge wire, you're going to have to get enough copper, small copper wire strands, to make up for this thickness, for the amount of copper that is supposed to be there, okay? So what happens is that when you have a one solid chunk of copper right here, it's compacted. And if you, if you get um, a lot of smaller wires together, I'm just putting those markers together, they're round. Let's say this is with the magnification of that. You see there, there, are, there are air gaps between those. So of course, if you want to compensate for the same amount of copper, in size, in the physical size, this wire, the stranded wire is going to be a little bit thicker. That also is going to be on the test, hint, hint, okay? All right, so this is as far as uh, gauging. Um, so you just have to remember, as the number, the number of the gauge goes up, the thickness goes down. So 14 gauge wire is going to be, um, 14 gauge is going to be thinner, or sorry, 14 gauge is going to be thicker than the eight gauge, right? No, the eight gauge is going to be thicker than 14 gauge. Right? So again, go back to the microscope, you can see that the, this wire here, that's a 12 gauge, as far, sorry, this is a 14 gauge, this is a 14 gauge wire, it's thinner than the 12 gauge wire. This, uh, it wasn't specified, but my guess is that I just, I just got it from uh, some lamp cord and I cut it, but it was not specified. That looks to me like it is a 16 gauge uh, wire. But it looks like it's a 16 gauge wire. So normally if it was solid core, it would be thinner than the 14 gauge. But because of the stranded uh, strands, the strands elements in there, the stranded wires, of course it's gonna become thicker uh, physically. All right, let's just keep going. We have 20 minutes left. All right, household wiring, household wiring, okay. The most common type of cable used in household is technically known as NMD90, all right? 
NMD90. You're going to hear that a lot. The NMD90 stands for non-metallic, which is the jacketing, dry, which is supposed to be installed in a dry environment, so you can't put it underground directly, or you can't have it outside because of the elements, rain as such, and such. Service cable, service means that it is supposed to supply the power. It's not a communications cable, like a microphone cable or, 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 or speaker cable that's supposed to carry signal. A service cable is supposed to provide you power. Service cable rated at maximum of 90 degrees Celsius. It's supposed to withstand 90 degrees. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So this thing is supposed to handle 90 degrees Celsius. So NMD90 stands for non-metallic dry service cable rated at maximum 90 degrees Celsius. The brand name that is commonly called is Romex. Um, Romex used to be the only company that would uh, produce those cables. So uh, you hear quite often you're going to hear some people who have been long enough in the electrical industry. Uh, so give me some Romex. Bring me a box of Romex. Bring me a roll of Romex. That means NMD90. Okay. The cable is usually configured in a two or three conductor combination. Two conductor having a black and a white conductor and a bare copper wire. So two conductor wire. Uh, 14 two, that means it's a 14 gauge and two carrying current carrying conductors plus uh, the grounding wire. So 14 two is going to have three wires. Three? That's three. Right? right? What is it? There are three people, three kinds of people in this world, and those who can count and those who can't. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Okay, the cable is usually not okay. Um, da, 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 da. So, what's the meaning of the 90 degree? Yeah, the 90 degrees Celsius, uh, it's a temperature. It's supposed to carry, it's supposed to 90 degrees. Uh, NMD 90 is a non metallic dry uh, 90 degrees. It's supposed to handle, not get damaged if it's subjected to the temperature of 90 degrees Celsius yeah? as opposed to Fahrenheit. Um, whatever the temperature is in Fahrenheit, but we're in Canada, we're in metric system. So NMD90 is it for us. Uh, all right, so there is the three conductor has a black. So the three conductor has a black, red, and white conductor and a bare copper wire. So we have in the two conductor, we always have white because that's the neutral. So we'll always have the white cable or conductor. Well, uh, and then if it, when we, then we go for the next one, the hat, the first hat is going to be black, the second hat is going to be red. So in, 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 in three conductor, you're going to have actually four wires, white, black, red, and you're going to have the um, grounding wire. Okay. Uh, the conductors mostly, uh, okay, so NMD90, the conductors are mostly Common, most commonly, 14 gauge. See, I just didn't read AWG. I just just 14 gauge. The uh, the cable also comes as two or three 12 gauge configurations, depending on what the purpose is. You need more current. You need a thicker cable, so you go you lower the number of the gauge. So the lower number of the gauge is going to give you a thicker cable. Okay. All right, household wiring. Most commonly used cables in their uses. Uh, so let's say 14.2. Uh, okay, we have 14.2 here. Most commonly for the wall plugs where you plug your TV uh, and your, uh, your your desk lamp and your computer and so on. Uh, switches uh, for the light switches, lights. This is also going to be. This is the most used, most used cable in the household wiring. 70% of the household wiring is the NMD90 or the Romex cable, NMD90. Okay. That also is going to be on the test. Three conductor wires, 14. See, I'm, I, I look at this line here and I read 14.3 cable. Okay. 
three-way switches. We're going to look at that uh, and split receptacles. We're going to take a look at what split receptacle is uh, next time when we see each other. So we're going to complete this. Uh, most commonly, uh, okay. So two conductor twelve. So twelve two, twelve gauge is thicker wire than the 14 gauge, which means it's supposed to carry more current. It's supposed to be able to handle more current. So uh, we're looking at the heaters because heaters do draw a lot of power, air compressors, etc., and etc. Et uh, anything that uses maximum of 12 amps. Okay. Now when we go to 14 gauge, 14 gauge is uh, used in circuits that are designed for 15 amps. That's also going to be on the test. 14 gauge is supposed to is rated for 15 amps in household wiring. 12 gauge is rated for 20 amps in household wiring. Okay. Then there's three conductors, so so so, so it's a 10-3 gauge of 10, which we're going to thicker, uh, thicker cable. Any device that requires maximum of 30 amps. The most common applications would be electric dryer in your basement. Uh, then three conductors number eight, we're going thicker wire, maximum of 40 amps. The most common application would be electric wrench. What's electric wrench? That's a stove. It's your stove. Keep going, household wiring. Uh, now, here's a $64 question for you. The household wiring should be connected in series or in parallel. Anybody? Parallel. I got parallel. I got one parallel. Do I get any series? Another parallel. Yes, it is parallel. And I'm going to explain to you why. All right, let's say, okay, I'm going to lower the light here. Wait for the light to lower so you can see things better. All right, let's say this is a receptacle right here. Or electrical panel. Now inside the wall, you, the wire is going to su supply one duplex receptacle and inside the wall from that one is going to go and supply another one and maybe a third one here. So uh, over here you have a fridge. That's your fridge working. Over here you have your uh, well, you have your uh, lamp. Okay. And over here you have your TV. Oh, let's just, you know what? Let's just turn the other way. No, no, let's go, let's go this way here. If it was done in series, then there would be a supply wire going into the TV on, into the lamp, into the fridge, and it would come back on a return wire, go back into the electrical panel. So that would be a series configuration. So what happens? Let's say uh, you turn the TV off. You're not watching the TV. So you're just going to make a break here. So if your TV is off, your fridge is not working and you get no light on your desk. That would really, really be a bad situation. Right? Because in order for your fridge to be working, you will have to have your TV on all the time. So now we're going to have a parallel configuration. So there would be uh, two current carrying conductors. And from here, you're going to go, oops, here, that way. And that is going to go into your TV. And there's another one. Yeah, this is going to go into your lamp. Lamp. All right, here. And uh, if uh, there's another one, and that is going to go into your fridge. So now if you're not watching TV, you're going to break that circuit. You're going to break that circuit, but the current also, so this is with the, this would be return. This would be the, sorry, this would be supply. This would be the return cable, uh, cable here, right? 
So if you break, if you don't, you watch the TV, those wires are still connected and devices are connected in parallel to, um, yeah. So uh, that is, uh, that's a, you know what? Um, as funny as it sounds, I'm actually going to ask you that also on a test. And on some of the tests, I might actually ask you to supply, uh, supply the answer. Explain why. Uh, yeah. Let's wait for this thing to dry. We have 10 more minutes, guys. We're almost done. Once this thing is dry, it's easier to erase. Okay, good. Go back to our presentation. Now, this is going to be quite blurry, but um, uh, once you download it, uh, this is just an example on how things, so, so I'm not going to test you on this because it, there's no way possibly I can test you on looking at this picture, but it, this is for you to see how things are wired in a house, uh, household configuration. Another, uh, this is the last slide. Yes, this is the last slide. Okay, um, service conductors. Service conductors are basically, service conductors are basically the ones that are su that supply the power as opposed to a signal conductors, like a microphone or something like that. Uh, there, is a specific, there are specific cables used to carry the power into house to service panel. So this would be the, these will be the wires, the service conductors. This would be the wires that are going from the utility pole into your house oh, I'm using the yeah over here these these are the uh, service conductors that are going from the utility pole outside on to the outside uh, disconnect and they're going to inside your uh, panel service conductors that are run overhead which means uh, uh, well above your head yeah? um, that they are made out of aluminum or if you're in England, you would say aluminium, all right? So aluminum to reduce the weight of the cable. Aluminum is not a better conductor, but it's lighter. And since those wires are hanging over the sidewalk and going into the house, uh, they, are, uh, they are made out of aluminum because of the weight. Okay? One last thing, we have eight minutes. Uh, we have eight minutes um, left. I'm going to show you the difference between stranded and solid. All right, there it is. Okay, this should be less blurry because I'm able to zoom in right now here. Okay, so there's a difference. Here's the difference between a solid core wire and a stranded wire. Now, here's description, usage, and advantages, and I listed disadvantages as well. We're just gonna consider, uh, concentrate on this. Solid core wire, this is what it looks like, one chunk of copper, and there's a stranded wire, which is uh, many chunks of copper put together to form a wire. Right? Description, single strand, for this solid, it's a single uh, strand or a core of wire, insulated with non-conductive material. Oh, there's a storm outside happening here. Uh, now, as opposed to a bundle of small gauge wires insulated with non-conductive material. Yep. Straightforward. Usage, household and commercial permanent mount. Typical in-wall power cabling. Now, we can also use this in household and commercial. We can also use stranded in permanent mount, but it's recommended that you're using that on moving or vibrating parts, such as machinery in a factory. Uh, where do we put? Oh yeah, uh, the, the, the notes are posted on FOL, and I'll show you before I leave. Uh, <clears throat> so we can use it in household because it's okay. We can use it in permanent mount, but if we have some vibrating parts like machinery uh, and, and, and things like that, cars, you, you, it's recommended that you use stranded wire because it's more flexible and the vibrations, are, vibrations will carry through the solid core more 
then they would carry through the stranded, the, the vibrations would just disappear in the stranded wire. Uh, so if you have a, um, a solid core wire uh, connected to a screw terminal, if you have a vibrating environment, that thing will actually vibrate the screw out of the connection. So you can, you can lose a connection. So, uh, so it's recommended that if it's a vibrating environment, vibrating parts, stranded wire. In the industrial, if, you're, if you end up as industrial electrician, uh, stranded will be uh, your bread and butter kind of a thing. If you end up in uh, wiring houses and, and, and buildings, mostly you'll be using solid core wire. It is more, more uh, the stranded wire is more expensive to produce. This is cheaper to produce, okay? So the price is uh, the thing that wins. Advantages. Well, for the solid core wire, it's cheaper to produce, more compact diameter, we talked about it a few minutes ago, uh, as the same current carrying a bit capability as stranded, uh, less likely to fail during, due to, sorry, due to corrosion. So that's advantage, okay? Um, uh, very flexible for the strength uh, advantages for the stranded wire it's very flexible withstands greater amount of flexing and vibration and it's easier to route right? so it tight spaces it, because it's more flexible it's easier to install so why is this uh, now as far as disadvantages here okay advantages uh, let's just go back a little bit so usage and advantages uh, okay advantages uh, more compact, uh, okay, less likely to fail due to corrosion. You see that the, the area that is exposed to the air and the element is just the outside area of that one hunk of metal, okay? Now, the, 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 the stranded wire, you have many smaller wires and each and single one of them is exposed to the elements. So more area is, exp uh, more area at the time is exposed to the outside elements. So those strands can corrode inside as well. And over here, it's just that outside area. Okay, so that's how, uh, how it works. Disadvantages of a solid wire, typically only available in smaller gauges. Why is that? Uh, it's because uh, if you have a thick, thick gauge uh, or, uh, or thick wire that is um, solid, then you're not dealing with a wire anymore. You're dealing with a piece of metal bar, which is harder to bend and so on. So if you, when you go thicker wires, you're going to find thick wires available only in stranded configuration because the stranded is easier to bend when, uh, when you have a thicker gauge. Okay. Um, so then just continuous flexing or vibration will cause the wire to fatigue or break. Okay. So that's, I don't think I have to explain that. Uh, diameter, so now for the stranded wire, disadvantages, diameter is larger for the same carrying, uh, for the same current carrying capability. That should, I'm missing a word here. For the same current carrying capability as solid. Okay more costly to produce um, and more likely to fare due to corrosion. And we just explained that. Uh, this here, you can read that, but uh, basically this is what I want you to remember from this lesson here. So the PowerPoint that we did. Okay, now let me just uh, show you how, because uh, somebody asked how do we get the, uh, okay, you have another class? Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to uh, we're going to finish this. Uh, whoever needs to leave, they leave, and uh, I'm going to quickly show you. Whoever wants to stay behind, a couple minutes. I'm going to show you if you don't know already on how to navigate to your um, uh, to your um, uh, FOL space. You should know that already. But uh, so the lesson is ended. See you guys. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I think we're going to do Zoom again. So I'm going to send you the link. All right. Okay. See you guys. Go to your next class. Bye. Um, all right, so now I'm going to show you how to navigate to the FO. I'm, going to, I'm just going to, just give me a second. I'm going to queue up on my laptop here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to log in. All right, so here is the FOL. Now, this is what my looks like. Yours is going to look slightly different because you have different subjects. So let's say we're going to go into your here, okay? 
Hey guys, uh, can I just get you to be quiet just for a second, a little bit? Um, all right, now you go to the content right here. Click on that. Actually, I'm going to make myself as a student. So you go to content. If once you log into the portal of this class, go to content. And once you go to content, you're going to see your student resources right here. And then if you click on that, you're going to see the lecture notes or you're going to see the labs, okay? So you can click on that and you can download. So this, uh, and sometimes I'm going to post things ahead of time. And uh, if, it's, uh, if I do, you're going to see this in black and it's going to show you the date on when it says starts on October 2nd. Uh, so this is tomorrow's uh, lecture. It is posted, but it's not available for download yet. It will be available for download on this date and time. Okay? And you can, just, uh, you, can, you can just go to those, and these are available for you to download. These are the lecture notes. Plus, I'm also posting this, uh, these, my lectures on YouTube under the playlist that I put on. Uh, you can review those, uh, those, those, those lectures, but I also encourage you to make notes during, those, uh, dur during the classes. Because uh, if you, at the end of the term, if you want to watch all the videos, that's going to be impossible for you. Yeah? Okay, I hope this was useful for you, and I'll see you tomorrow, uh, whatever the time is. Uh, what's the time tomorrow? It is... I'm just going to take a look at my schedule. Uh, tomorrow we meet at 11 a.m. Okay. Okay. It was a blast. Love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.